Hey guys, welcome back to the AJ Analysis channel where today we are talking about one of the worst defensive performances you will see anywhere in the Premier League this season. Of course, Manchester United losing 1-0 to Newcastle United, being completely outplayed, battered, outworked, everything, just completely destroyed. Completely destroyed. The scoreline may say 1-0, Newcastle could have won this any score that they wanted to. So, let's get into what went wrong. And honestly, this guy's taking a lot of the blame. I'm a big fan of Eric Ten Hag, but this was embarrassing the way that he set his side up. But let's get into it. So before we continue into the video, a quick shout out to today's video sponsor, JerseyFIFA.com, the home of all of the greatest football kits. Whether that be the new latest releases or the old classic ones like this, Jersey FIFA has something for everyone. And now you can check it out yourself using the link in the description down below. And also make sure to use code JerseyFIFA for 10% off when you order. We're going to start with the out of possession stuff because honestly, I'm not even going to bother talking about the in possession side of the game because United was so poor off the ball. We actually didn't see that much of United on the ball. So it's going to start with a high press, apparently. You know, a so called high press. I've been very generous labeling it like that. And United have a few different structures they can press in, right? One of these structures will be a, a kind of a piston press up front. So let's say the centre back's got the ball. One person goes like this. And then if the other centre back gets the ball. Martial would then go press it and Bruno Fernandes would drop into Gimrush, right? The idea is that you're always keeping this middle player marked whilst also applying pressure to the ball. It's not a bad structure to use if you use it in the right way. But United don't use it in the right way at all. Let's say this player has the ball here. Bruno Fernandes will go nice and high and Martial will sit here. Which means that when this ball goes backwards and Bruno really puts all his effort into getting here to press the ball, it's just ridiculously easy for the ball now to go to Gimrush. Oh, like this. Newcastle actually aren't a great side at playing out from the back. What you'll often see, particularly with Nick Pope, is that they, have, they often go quite long and, and they're quite a direct side. But United were that bad at pressing. Newcastle had an absolute field day playing out from the back. It was way too easy. It's because Martial gets nowhere near. But because this ball has gone backwards, right, and that's the trigger, Rashford has started to squeeze in a little bit like this. But because we've now just left Gimrish completely free because Martial's a couple of yards off him, playing with no intensity... The ball just goes in here and around the corner. We've got a really good example of it about three minutes in, which we can check out using Once Video Analyzer Pro. Great video analysis software. If you want to check it out, use the link in the description down below. I use it all the time for these sorts of videos. But we've got it here. Bruno Fernandes is forcing the ball backwards. Not bad. This is three minutes 17 into the game. You know, a stage of the game where players should have energy. So Bruno Fernandes is going to force the ball backwards. And exactly that happens. Now, what we can see here is that Bruno Fernandes has now got the ball back to Lascelles, just above me uh, here. Bruno Fernandes has got that covered because he's pressed at a good angle. He's also got it covered that if the ball goes across to the next centre-back, Bruno Fernandes can get across. Now, we've got two problems with how the rest of the press is being executed here. The first problem being, if Rashford's this high, the fullback has to be up here as well. But if he's not, Rashford should be deeper. The other thing being, keep an eye on Martial and Bruno Gimrush. In a piston press, you've got to be tight here. You've got to be tight on the player. But Martial just is never tight at any point in this move. The ball goes across to uh, Fabian Scher, comes into Bruno Gimrush, Martial, we can see, nowhere near him, three minutes into the game, it's far too easy for Newcastle to get the foot on the ball, and this pass here is going to take one, two, three, four Manchester United players out of the game, simply because the structure was poor and the intensity wasn't there, the ball goes wide to Livermento, Livermento picks the ball up, carries the ball forward, and keeps carrying the ball forward, and keeps carrying the ball forward, all because United's pressing structure was so bad, plus the players didn't play with enough intensity. Then we see a kind of a, a two versus one against wan -Bissaka. We see the one two down this side of the pitch. Newcastle end up in the final third and I believe they got a, a shot from this situation. But it was all from United actually being reasonably high up the pitch in a position where you could actually press. But the pressing structure is that terrible that they can't. The other issue, of course, with the press, which we always speak about, is that when United use a different pressing structure, where... I've lost the ball. Where's the ball gone here? Um, where the ball's going to go like this to the cells. And a striker's going to come over. We're going to go man-to-man -man in midfield. And Rashford's going to lock in this side. I finally found the ball. Here it is. But because the far winger comes in, the ball can go backwards and then get floated over the top. And when you've got a powerful runner like Livermento, again, he can pick the ball up, receive, and stride forward. It's incredibly, incredibly easy. We've also got another problem with United's off-the-ball structure. And that is that Fabian Scher is a good ball carrier. Someone who strides forward quite nicely into the midfield. United didn't have anyone getting close to stopping that because Rashford's kind of two versus one down this side and defensively his work rate was pathetic. He, he, should, be, he should be dropped for his off-the-ball performance in this game. I'm a big fan of Rashford, but this was inexcusable. Fabian Chair is now able to step forward with the ball. So that's another problem. Another problem we've got is that Manchester United are man-for-man man in the midfield. Now, typically, 
in good teams, a man-for-man -man press in midfield is, is absolutely fine. But only if you're, the rest of your team defends quite well. Now, this isn't even putting blame on the midfielders. This is a blame on Eric Ten Hag, the manager. Because what it was now incredibly easy for Newcastle to do was make uh, or take advantage of that. Because when you're man-to-man, -man, you follow players everywhere. So if Joel Linton moves here, McTominay's going to follow him. If Miley moves here, Kobe Mane is going to follow him. And it just opened up a ridiculous amount of room in here for Isaac. Now, I wish this was an exaggeration. Of course, the defensive line's a little bit higher. But in terms of the gaps in the midfield area, this isn't an exaggeration. This is literally how the game was playing out. Again, it's absolutely pathetic. It's not helped also by the fact that, once again, even if United do get back into position and do get behind the ball, that the wingers are left playing high, particularly Marcus Rashford, meaning that if Gordon makes a run forward and takes Wan-Bissaka with him, this ball can now so easily be cycled back out wide to someone like Livermento. Once again, you can go two versus one against the fullback, get into the final third and create another chance. Really bad. Really, really bad from a defensive point of view. It's Again, it's inexcusable. You, you can't have a pressing system which is this bad. In terms of then when United are defending a little bit deeper, there's more problems. Because United are in a man-to-man -man system, let's say Lewis Miley, who had a, a really good game with his movement off the ball, he's going to make a run into this channel. So Kobe Mane is going to follow him, rightfully so, that's his job. But then it leaves Bruno Fernandes and Scott McTominay trying to defend as a double pivot on the edge of a penalty area. That's not good, which means that when you do get forced deeper with players like Izak and again Miley dragging players like this, dragging Kobe Mane out of position, which he done, again, he done really well at doing this, Miley, it's going to leave these two defending the edge of the box, which means that once the ball's gone wide and the rest of the team is, of course, now up the pitch with them, it's just so easy for them to come back inside into this sort of area and then find players here. Potentially Joel Linton, Gimmeresh, Lewis Miley. It could be anyone. It was so easy for Newcastle to progress the ball through the pitch. And again, like I've said a few times already, I wish this was an exaggeration. I wish this was me kind of, you know, blowing out the water a little bit. But this is genuinely just how easy it was for Newcastle to play this game. If you haven't watched it, or even if you have, go back and watch the game. It is unbelievably easy for Newcastle to cover about 60 yards of this pitch. The forwards... Depressing structure is horrendous from Ten Hag with the forwards. It's, it's awful. The intensity of the forwards also isn't good enough. Martial and Rashford are, or were, in this game, lazy. It, it was really poor from them. So you've got a man-to-man -man structure with two players playing in quite a lazy way, but also a poor pressing structure. It's just not going to go well, is it? It's never going to go well. Those two should both be dropped uh, for the Chelsea game. They, they shouldn't get a, a shot at playing that football match because they were terrible in this game. And... It just leaves spaces all over the pitch. Like I said, we've then got a midfield, which is going man-to-man -man and not winning the battles. I've got it here. Newcastle won 62 ground duels in this game. United won 36. Now, a ground duel can be a tackle. It can be a dribble. But what we can see there clearly is that Newcastle won the individual battles all over the pitch. But particularly in the midfield, when you're going man-for-man, -man, you can't afford to lose those battles. United did. Scott McTominay, he's meant to be our big physical bruiser in the midfield, got absolutely done by Joel Linton. Absolutely done. In fact, so badly that after about 20 minutes, Ten Hag moved him further up the pitch and dropped Bruno Fernandes into a double pivot alongside Kobe Mainu. What is that for a defensive structure? I love Kobe Mainu. I thought he was brilliant on the ball. Again, one of the only players in this side which deserves any credit. On the ball, incredible. His ability to keep the ball is so valuable to this United side. But out of possession, you know, he works hard and he is a good tackler, but he's not a, a monster of an athlete. He doesn't cover an insane amount of ground and fly about the pitch and put loads of tackles in. So having him and Bruno Fernandes in these areas, trying to defend the likes of Joel Linton and Miley, who are both much bigger than these two, it's, you're just asking for disaster. And then, of course, what Newcastle are going to do is create overloads in the final third. Garnacho actually worked really hard tracking back. I've seen claims that the wingers were lazy. No, that's lazy punditry. Garnacho was not lazy in this game. He was tracking back and working hard. But regardless, Newcastle create overloads literally all over the pitch and just completely tore United apart. Completely. And, yeah, that's basically the story of the game. We will cover a little bit of the possession side, actually, real quick. Because it's the most confused possession approach I've ever seen. Now, United actually had moments in the first half where they could have scored goals. There were situations much higher up the pitch than this, where Newcastle were a man short. United worked the overload quite well. It's just poor decisions in the final third. United were okay in that way. But I think that the problem still is that we're going long so much. Again, against an incredibly physical Newcastle side. So we're going long to Martial against Lascelles and Fabian Cher. He's not going to win that battle, is he? McTominay didn't win a single battle. He was just completely, again, completely done by the looks of Joel Linton and Bruno Gimmerish. Completely outplayed. 
He didn't get close to them, considering he's our, our physical outlet in the side. He done absolutely nothing. But a big problem is that we're playing players in positions which suggest we want to play the ball from the back. Luke Shaw at centre-back. We're not playing Rafael Varane because he isn't left-footed. He's one of the best box defenders in world football, but we're not playing him because he's not left-footed, so he can't play out from the back. But we just pump the ball on anyway. If we're just going to send the ball on constantly, again, Onana, four out of 20, uh, three, is it three or four? It's three out of 20 long passes completed in this game. This United side is so direct. If you're going to be that direct, at least get Varane, Maguire and Shaw in decent positions. Shaw at left back, Varane and Maguire in the middle because they're good at defending their box. What's this whole thing with Rafael Varane? He's not left footed so we can't play out from the back. We don't play out from the back anyway, Eric Ten Hag. We don't do it anyway. Your, your logic doesn't make any sense. You're being way too stubborn and it's costing your team massively. Your defensive structure hasn't worked for four months and you still stick with it. The in-possession structure is barely a structure. We've got Luke Shaw at times will drop and show for the ball. Kobe Maynard is going to do the same. But at the same time, wan looks disinterested in playing out from the back. So does Onana. So does Maguire at times or Fernandez. Not to criticise those individually. I just mean, you know, it changes in different scenarios. Again, we can head over to Once Video Analyzer Pro to look at this. This is about 15 minutes into the game. Onana's going to bowl the ball out to Kobe Mainu. Nothing wrong with that. That's what you do. You play the ball out from the back. Kobe Mainu gets on the turn and he's going to pass to Luke Shaw. But what I want to look at is the body language of the players around them. Now, I'm not saying this is lazy body language or anything like that. What I'm saying here is, do these look like players who believe the manager wants them to play out from the back? Is Onana in a proactive position to receive the ball here? No. Is Maguire in a proactive position ready to receive the ball and play out from the back? No. If you watch a possession side, a Manchester City or an Arsenal, when they do this, players open their body up. They're getting ready to receive the ball. They're getting ready to make the next angle. But United don't do that. That's fine. It's okay if you don't want to play out from the back. But if you don't want to play out from the back, don't try and do it. Don't go short like this. And then because no one's really showing for the ball or creating an angle, we get forced over to one side way too easily. With Kobe Mainu, the only real player trying to make himself an option here. Onana's not you know, getting himself in an active position for sure to turn. Maguire's not dropping in. Dallo is kind of showing for the ball. Bruno Fernandes isn't. Kobe Mainu is trying to get over. So Shaw's got no option here but to go to Dallo. The ball goes to Dallo. Dallo looks up. There's no one to pay to. For some reason, he tries this pass. It's easily intercepted. It goes to Anthony Gordon. Newcastle end up getting a shot once again. And like I said, I'm not even necessarily blaming the individuals here. This for me is more on the manager because it looks like, and it will be seen all the time, United want to play the ball up from the back, so the ball goes short. The goal kicks mostly go short. The, you know, there we saw Onana bowl it out to Kobe Menu, so we're going short. But then, the body language of all the players, once they receive the ball, is let's get ready to go long and defend the second ball. It's really confused. Tactically, it's so confused. And you can see that physically the players don't know what they're meant to be doing. Now again, when you couple that with players who are in horrendous form, Marcus Rashford, really bad form, he needs to be, he actually needs to be personally protected we need to see some good man management here take him out of the team because he's not working hard and he's not playing well so he's a detriment to the side for his own mental health get him out of that starting 11 martial lazy shouldn't play again although i understand some of that was because of rasmus hoyland not being fully fit but eric ten Hag, i don't know what you're doing with your structure and it makes it really hard to defend when like i've said already we have the same structural issues that we had four months ago when you have the same issue for four months, it is no longer a personnel issue. It is an issue on the manager. And Eric Ten Hag at the moment is making problems for himself. Do I still think he's the man potentially to change the club around? Absolutely. But only if he stops being so stubborn and realises certain things. You can't press in the Premier League with four players and have the rest of them on the halfway line. It doesn't work. You can't play the ball short and then boot it long every time and expect to win a football match. It doesn't work. Eric Ten Hag needs to be less stubborn, get the right players in his side and go from there. If he doesn't, he's in a lot of trouble. In terms of who are the right players, the only three players which deserve any credit from this game. Luke Shaw, brilliant defensively at centre-back. Harry Maguire, again, brilliant defensively at centre-back. These two stopped this being three or four against United. And then Kobe Mainu on the ball, I thought it was absolutely excellent. His, his ability to almost guarantee that he's going to keep possession for the side every time he touches the ball, even against a high press, is so valuable to this United side. Those three, no matter what positions they're in, are the three players Eric Ten Hag should be like, yes, they need to be in my team. The rest of them, not so sure. Garnacho deserves to be in, but all of that is a conversation for another today. For another today? For another day. In terms of today's video, I've got no more to say, because it's the same structural problem we've had all season. 
it was just really exposed by a, a good Newcastle side. Not a brilliant Newcastle side in this game, just a, a good, well-oiled side, which completely outclassed Manchester United. Um, yeah, let me know what you think in the comments down below. Have I been a little bit harsh on Ten Hag? Is this, you know, more of a player problem? Let me know what you think. Do you think we should have conceded by more? What's the real problem? All of that, let me know in the comments down below. But apart from that, we are finished for today. So thank you guys for watching. I hope you have enjoyed it. And as always, I'll see you in the next one.